Welcome to the Mystical Motherhood Podcast. This is Chelsea, and I want you to create a happy family. I use my background in Western and Eastern medicine, birth, and ancient yogic practices to help the modern mother learn how to live a healthier life and create conscious children. This is your guide to fertility, conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and the early childhood years. Are you ready to live the life of your dreams? Welcome to Mystical Motherhood Season 3. Today's guest came to me asking questions about conscious conception, and instead of getting to anything light, we jumped into the deep end of the pool and went deep into her childhood and some of the patterns that are manifesting with her partner around um, having an alcoholic mother and then dealing with alcohol in present day. And a lot of people have, you know, the same pattern with other things like maybe drugs, maybe work, maybe unavailability, maybe love, all connected back to our original childhood. And in order to clear this before you have a baby, you have to look at your patterns. And so we get into a really deep conversation about it. I hope you enjoy. Head over to mysticalmotherhood.com. Fertile and my book, Mystical Motherhood, are both available via my website and on Amazon. Please subscribe to this podcast. Okay. So how did you find, how did you found my work because you were looking online and you were just Googling something? What did you, what did you look up? Cause I'm curious okay. how people find it. Yes. Okay. So I, okay. So I met with a midwife in August and she kind of talked about diet and stuff. So that's how I started to transition into vegan, like in the fall. So then I went back to her was it that last month? Maybe last month. And she told me about Conscious Conception. So like the really older book. So I bought it, but I couldn't really fully understand it as I was reading it. I had to kind of like keep reading what everything to try to really comprehend it. So I just YouTube Conscious Conception and your video came up for Mystical Motherhood. Okay. And I, then I just went on Amazon and I bought the book. And it was just such an easier read, but felt like... I was getting the same kind of information. <laughs> yes, I made it really easy. Fertile is much harder, yeah. but for yeah. really great. good to um, understand what you're doing and understand what element you're in, which we'll talk about because I'm reading your energy and it feels like there's a lot of earth in the bottom of you and then there's some water in the top. So like if we understand our elements, we understand where we are. Yeah. And- what we're running and the kind of emotions we're running and what we need to clear. And then when you know what kind of emotions you're running inside and how we need to balance out, you can do meditations or use food to balance those out just like they do for acupuncture. And when I wrote fertile and I wrote about the elements being a part of fertility, I didn't even think of acupuncture until like six months later. It didn't even the connection. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's acupuncture. But right, right. So it was coming through so easily and so naturally of like the elements are connected to the geometry, which is connected to the creation of the embryo. Because yeah. elements are going go back, it's all goes back to the basics of how we are, shapes, colors, sounds. That's Real like, yeah, yes. like, it's like if we take away this body, what what is left? Mm. that goes back to kundalini which as you begin to awaken which you wouldn't be meeting with me you'll see what i mean it goes back to these like very simple functions so getting to the embryo and understanding yourself you'll know what kind of an the energy of the embryo that you want to create right and then you become the designer of that so tell me tell me more about what your doing in your life and where you are so you've been with your partner for two years Mm -hmm. are you married yes okay and I feel like your relationship is good do you feel that is there anything you need to work out with that I don't think there is no we're like really he's my best friend so it's just our whole thing is kind of built on friendship really and our foundation is pretty strong so you read a little bit of mystical motherhood what because so what I normally do when I work with people and whoever's listening 
I work with women all over and they just come to me. I don't necessarily go search for anyone. Somebody just finds me and then I work with them what they need to do before they have their baby and however they have their baby. So everyone comes for different reasons and it's usually the the baby that sends you, but everyone's at different levels. Some people need diet and some people need heavy duty generational patterns. And so I can, I can look at you as a Western practitioner and I can look at you as, as a spiritual, like reading your energy and seeing what needs to be cleared. Um, but for you, it's like, if you want to know the basics of conscious conception and how to basically plan, we can talk about that. Like just, you know, how to plan with your husband, how to, what to talk about, how to prepare for the night of conception, how to maintain that frequency route. We can talk about that, or we can go into deeper things of like things that I think you should work on from your family that's still within you and then give you meditations for that. Like the first, the first time meeting someone there's, it's so broad and there's so yeah. much. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have no, you can't, it when, and then as you begin to awaken, you have no idea how much you can clear. Like even with me, I've been doing this for so many years and there's still more I can leave and there's still more. I can leave. And it comes like an onion of, of we have no idea the amount of ignorance and attachment we have within us. And then when you think that you've like let go of absolutely everything, there's still more to let go of. Right. Um, so when you read, what do you, what are you feeling like you need? Um, I guess just more over, it's like a guidance thing, like a spiritual guidance and possibly some deeper stuff because um, growing up with alcohol, and then, like, in my partner, my husband, he has also has had issues with alcohol. So I wonder, it's like, that's like of a... Of course, you attract... So according to Yogi Bhajan, you attract your mother in a relation, in, in a husband. It, you actually really? are creating your mother. Yeah, I, I, I think that once you create your mother, then you create your father if you have another relationship. I don't fully <laughs> that because I've definitely created my father in a partner <laughs> and I'm like there's my dad over and over <laughs> for me I don't I didn't see my mother maybe my right. mother will be my mother I don't know mother, right but, but like I saw my father and so for you it might be your mother but it might yeah. I mean, it could be just the biggest wound that you have to heal and then you have to work through that constantly and you don't know any different and so until that's really healed within you and we so yeah. ask the one thing for all my work is we can never ask somebody else to change. Right. And, and like, as a woman, I'm, we're constantly trying to make these men change. Mm-hmm. And we spend, I mean, that's my biggest thing is like, we spend so much time and energy to make a man change. And I was sitting at lunch with this woman a couple weekends ago and we were talking about how she's changing in business and how she's like leading bigger rooms of men and how she's doing that. And she goes, I stand, she said it to me like this. She goes, I stand here in the room. I become incredibly silent. I go into this. Div- so if there's a male yelling at her, no one's listening or everyone's talking over. She goes, I don't do anything Right. I go into this higher energy and either they can meet me where I am and then, or they don't. And that goes right. with dating or with your husband or with whatever, but you have to raise yourself up to that higher level and either they'll meet you or they'll f- go away. And you right. have to maintain that and not go down in your own self-esteem because you're the one who's creating the child and the yes. next generation. And he is there to help you do that. Does that make sense? Yes, 100%. So how much is he drinking? Um, he, he overall has it pretty under control. He doesn't like, it's just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like if he starts to, he can fall back into it easily, but he, he just doesn't drink often now, but it's like, sometimes he can, like, it's just like, it can be and like, one of the years. Girl triggered. yeah, I think. So. Yeah. Well, definitely. So this is definitely. a part of the conscious. Okay. So not only there's their conscious conception, but then there's these conscious communication and mm-hmm. conscious relationship. Right. And so, Another thing I teach, if you listen to the different podcasts I've done, is this is this is going to be part of my third book. It's not really in my first two. It's about the relationship and how to create the relationship to create the conscious child, which is a different aspect. But what happens when people have trauma that's unhealed in them? 
until they grow, it's like we have to, as partic- particularly as women, as mothers, if we don't heal that trauma, it is a hundred percent sure you'll begin to raise that child in moments from the level the trauma was occurred in you. Mm. So, if, so that's what I teach. It's like a lot of people come to me for fertility and then they're surprised because I'm like, no, 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 the little girl's still living in well, too. Yeah. And then their fertility changes because we're actually working on the issues that may be the emotional blocks to it, right? Or, or something. But basically, if your mom was drinking around the age of eight and you have these memories of, you know, this trauma that you've stuffed down, just like sexual abuse. Did you have any sexual abuse? No. no. <laughs> I just always ask. Yeah. Um, but if you have like this kind of stuff, your partner that you attract in is always going to trigger you at that age. And then you begin mm-hmm. to have a relationship. Even if your relationship goes up to the, your, per, your age right now, you'll go triggered back to the age of eight and he'll get triggered back to his age, which is probably the same age as eight. Typically, typically we attract people that are also have trauma at the similar age. Wow. A little bit off. So then, so then what happens is the two of you go, when you get into the triggered trauma, you're actually begin to talk from the subconscious programming of that period. So then you're fighting and this is what it's cool. So you become aware of it. And then the awareness of like, Oh my God, I'm going into my eight year old. Who's, Mm -hmm. who's speaking right now? Is it me or is it my my little, my little girl? And you can hold the relationship. So sometimes with these things, you can do all the work and you can hold the relationship and the male will come to meet you because they're looking for that. They awaken through the feminine. And they need that energy. Some males can't do it. So some males will go on their own healing thing, but then you'll attract a male that will. So if this man's your friend and will do this work with you, he'll meet you. Yeah. So you just have to work on changing yourself and he'll see the change within you. And as a result of that, he'll, he'll probably say, what are you doing? I want yeah. to do that with you. And then you don't, you don't have to ask him. He, they'll come. They'll come. Right. Mm-hmm. And he'll come and he'll do his own healing in his own way or mm-hmm. he'll put his own path, you know, and it's very cool, but somebody has to hold that frequency of like, I think we're going to do it differently. That's what conscious yeah. communicates. I mean, there's more, I mean, you can read my book about the sexual part and the food part and all that's in all my books, but like these podcasts are really about like, what is the dirt of it? And the yeah. dirt of it is like, if we're going to get that frequency of the embryo in a different kind of way, and if you're going to all what I teach in fertile that my second book available on Amazon is everything you think, feel, do, and say is programming the baby throughout your pregnancy. So you, the most important part of motherhood comes right before the eggs drop to when the baby's born. Oh, wow. And, and that is it. And so like, if let's say it, it takes you a little while to get pregnant, that's great because you have time right now to prepare mm-hmm. You're yes, yes. And it's not just the, the food is the, the thing that gets the density out and then mm-hmm. you move into the emotional body. So that's why I see the water in you. And so once you begin to get some of the density out, your, your, the fire, the earth, the air, the water can begin to clear and yeah. you'll see how these elements within you are related to like, like the water in the top of your lungs that I'm seeing that's grief of probably mom. Mm. Now, so so this also goes back into the third. And if you have, do you have any questions as I'm going along? What do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Fingers okay. in. Yeah. So the third book I'm writing is I'm working with people and it's coming through with different people I'm meeting because that's mm-hmm. how I they, they bring information to me. And I'm like, oh, there's the chapter. There's the chapter. Yeah. But in our the way to this new earth we're creating, which there is a new earth being created, and each individual is helping to do that by changing themselves, like you finding this work or however whoever they find to help them go through their awakening process. But okay. part of it is moving from the mind into the level of the heart. And the level of the heart, you have to you have to get past these first three chakras. So the first three chakras are like just in mystical motherhood, how I described we need to feel safe. We need to have security and we need to work through our father wounds, right? The second chakra is we need to have our emotional body and our self-esteem, you know, um, 
worked on, which is our kind of also related to our mother wound. So that I'm moving up through the energy field. The third is our, is our power. Like, do we feel in our power? And typically people are just stuck there. No one moves into the level of the heart because moving into the level of the heart is incredibly painful because you have oh. these are wounds. And so for yours is this wound of your mother, right? So tell yeah. me about, tell me about, and, and the one of the most, actually, one of the most important parts of motherhood is if you don't heal the wound of the mother, like if you don't heal it, it will, when you have that baby and you don't know how to fully mother yourself. So if, let's say you're still stuck at the age of eight because mom or whatever, eight, 15, we, I can go through your memories and find those specific years that really hurt you. Right. And then you'll get triggered. And, and when that baby's born, you're not going to recognize it, but you get traumatized into those years that you needed mothering. If you're not totally grown up or you don't have the, the ability um, to see it. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does this make sense? Yes. And yes, so, so like you could go through pregnancy and people think about the birth and they're planning for the birth and they're planning for um, just the baby. They're so excited making the mm-hmm. room and they spend hours making a room, but really what they should be working on is like, can they be a good mother? And are the, is the movie theater they're creating, which you'll understand in fertile is everything that you're creating around you is the movie theater of consciousness for this embryo and this genetic right imprinting you're creating and this is all goes back to the ancient priestesshood when they would create children in these temples it was just like it's creating of the movie it's creating of like sounds harmony all these different things that you can create life so when the baby's born if you haven't really particularly moved through that and you're not strong that's when the relationship can crash because you're going to go in, you're going to be at your weakest point and, and all of your stuff will come up. Mm. So it's really good to clear it before, which is why you're with me. Yes. And that's conscious motherhood. That's conscious conception. And that's like the preparing. It's not just a hokey dokey. It's intention. It's a high intention to hear yeah. these generational patterns. And I wouldn't be surprised if your grandma drank. So let's well, talk. My mother was a, um, she was a, um, she was adopted. So my mo- my grandmother was like, if I'm not mistaken, was probably like on drugs and things. So it was like an even deeper thing for her. Okay. So, so, and then do you think her mother was probably on drugs and drinking too? Do you think it goes back? I think it goes back like four generations. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> so but yeah. fear in you. So then, of course, you track attract a man that, of course, is going to sometimes trigger that. And mm-hmm. so there's going to be a fear in you of, and, and because you're so because it still exists in you. So what the deal is with all this is that we create our own reality because we are God self. And once we realize that everything everything that's outside of us is actually our subconscious. It's a hologram of our internal world. So money, our house, our job, our destiny, the people we attract, the friendships, the coincidences are all a part of this internal subconscious thing and we're projecting it out into a hologram. And then the, the awakening process is not to react to the people that are around you to say, oh, this guy did this to me. It's like, no, this somewhere lives within me. Mm-hmm. And somewhere I have not healed it. Somehow this person in front of me is telling me something about myself. And so no one becomes an enemy anymore because everybody, and that's how you see that everything is you is because it's just a hologram of your own here. So when things start to get really, really good or it goes up and down and that's what the, that's so beautiful about it all is then there's, there can't be a reaction because if you're only reacting to something that you've created within yourself. So if he mm-hmm. starts to drink, you have to really look at your level and be like, well, what? And not to say you're, it's, it's also co-creation. So it's not to say it's always you doing it. You're co-creating because you're best friends and you came to work through something together. 
Yeah. Right? And, he, and then we yeah. can look at him and I can tell you exactly what you're creating for him. And this is like mm-hmm. all these relationships. It's, it's a co-creation. It's cool. So, and you can only look at him. It's like, God, thank God you're here because now I get to look at why I'm so scared of my mom still. I'm so afraid that I'm going to recreate my mom. And so you, what I don't want to happen is that's why you guys have to work together and look at all your fears as a couple and look at your childhoods. Like, so do you have a piece of pen and paper? So this is kind of homework I want you to do. So yes, I do. Is this helpful? Are you feeling yes, it is. Yes. that you are different and that is new to you and that you can work with? Yes, definitely. Okay. So homework for conscious conception. And this is hard because it's super conscious <laughs> and nobody does it. Nobody's going to do this. But it's like, do you really understand his childhood? And I would say probably no. I don't know if he does. He's, um, he always, he doesn't remember like a lot of, of the bad things that have happened. He, he's like a kid that kind of blocked all that out. But, he but he's still this. stuck there. I can promise you, if particularly doesn't remember it. And, and so, you. 100%. So talking about both of your childhoods, talking about his parents and your parents and how they were raised or you, they raised you, or even if he was raised by his grandma, I mean, are we all mm-hmm. raised by different people, right? And I was raised by everybody and they all had different I had to be raised by everybody so I could see everybody else's being, I could see enmeshment. I can see, I mean, I've, I've experienced it all. Abuse, enmeshment, yeah. everything. But I had to go through that as a, as a soul so that I could help women and see their patterns. So with the two of you, you have to sit down and really understand each other's childhood and each other's triggers. Okay. And so you have to go into your own triggers and he's going to have to spend some time. So you can't just sit down with a man and say, tell me your triggers. He's going to be like, don't attack my ego. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, you have to be like, Hey, I'm doing something. And I'm like, so excited to make love with you and to make a baby with you. But I want to be a good mom. And I want to be the best I can be. And in order to be a good mom, I need to understand you. So I don't get triggered and you don't get triggered when we, as we begin to create this child, and we have a, a year or so to work together so that we can be consciously prepared to raise the child. Right. And I can be a better mom in pregnancy. And so for me to understand myself, I need to also understand you because I've attracted you. And so I've attracted some opposite or similar wounds from you to help me heal my own wounds. Yeah. And that's cool. And I know. Then, I agree. The relationship is like, oh God, we came together to do all this major healing. So instead of reacting to the healing that we're about to do, because you will, you still yeah. have a relationship. You have a long time ago, but like a long time to go. But you can look at it in such a different way of like, okay, so now I know that I know you don't remember everything, but that's also you, you know, hiding your trauma. But if we have a child and you've hidden all that trauma, you're gonna father from the level of trauma and he may and if he doesn't look at it he may start what 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 could happen is a lot of men when the baby's born if they're not somewhat conscious or healed they they get not all men but they may fall back into that old pattern of when they were children so i don't know what his pattern was but maybe dad drank so he can't even help it but he may start drinking, which then triggers your mom wound to come up because you're at home with the baby. And then yeah. we're both parenting from that level and the baby no gets home. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, and that's nobody's perfect. fault but the trigger of a child. And so for mm-hmm. us to create a new children that aren't strong like ours, then we have to change. Okay. Tell me what's going on in your mind. Um, nothing, just the, the, the understand, like I, when I realized that he reminded me of her, like he's my mother, I didn't put it together that it's like, it's because I'm supposed to heal that. So that is just such a like, okay, like you said, just a new outlook on it and a new perspective. And when things do happen, like I said, I can actually like acknowledge what's happening and try to 
get some 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 healing going on instead of so powerful, right? Yes, that, that really is. It really is. And it always and it's like and and that's what awakening is. It it all comes back to being like it's. I mean, it took me so long to even get there because you always project it. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. Yeah. And that's an old way of thinking that they're separate from us. It's mm. and that's like that thing of like duality of like, well, this is this guy is not me. That guy is you. He's a yeah. mirror of you. And so there's two things. What I've learned as I've become softer and I've become more compassionate for myself, really, and mm-hmm. for others, is that I try to see the good in others. So, for example, I'm dating now. I talk about it on my podcast now. I've never dated in my life because I was married for so long. All right. Now I'm going on these dates and I've cleared myself so much that I'm meeting all these beautiful, much more conscious men that I had to go through huge clearing to meet these just beautiful, I men. conscious men. I've changed myself enough that now my mere reflection is this joyful experiences, which I had not had that before. I've had like kind of, I've met some really in- men in different ways, but for all these men I've met, all of them have great qualities. So I could choose to focus on those negative qualities, or I could choose to focus on those positive qualities. And then I can take those positive qualities from all the people I meet and design the type of male I want. And this is also for the child you want to create. We're the designers of our reality. We are the co-creators. We're the priestess. We're the goddess. We are, we're the creator. And so with your husband, it's like, I want you to begin to look at his really, really good qualities and write them out and for him to do the same for you so that you can focus on creating those. And then you'll learn to focus on creating those when you have a child too. Because like when I was still, when I was an early mother, I was always like, she won't stop crying. She won't stop crying. She won't stop crying. If I'm focusing on my child, always crying, I'm creating it. And Mm. then I'm talking about it with other moms. She won't stop crying. She won't stop crying. And I'm letting everybody know she won't stop crying. Then I'm just, I'm creating that. We always do it. But for you, it's good to look at like, what do I want to create? I'm going to focus on that. And when I get triggered, when he triggers me, he's doing me a favor because I haven't healed this wound inside or I wouldn't be triggered by it. I wouldn't be emotional about it. I wouldn't be so upset if he's drunk. All right. Because if it was another woman who hadn't had a, 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 um, you who hadn't had an, a mother, did she abuse you? Mm-mm, no. So yeah, yeah, yeah. emotional abuse. Yes. Yes. Massive emotional abuse and unavailability. So an emotional mm-hmm. unavailability. So I'm, your, your partner is going to create emotional unavailability at times. And he's also going to create drinking at some times because then you have a way to look at your wound because it's unhealed. And the abandonment that comes around with that and the trigger, because for females, it's typically abandonment. And then we reach out to the male to fulfill that abandonment and the male typically runs, but they are still feeling abandonment, but they typically avoid it. They do it by running to avoid it because I don't know why that's the male energy. (laughs) We always always can switch back and forth, of course, Mm -hmm. but the woman typically runs after the, the male, but that's also very male of us. And our, the balanced feminine kind of pull, should pull back her energy, allow the male to move forward, and that balances out that chase running thing. Right, right. So tell me more about the drinking with the your mom. Um, Close your eyes, and then tap your third eye three times. And is there like specific memories that come up? with the drinking of your mom yes so she used to like I don't know it would seem like almost like a trance because like my brothers would have like friends over but she would end up being like naked but like cooking but drunk like she wouldn't realize like we have company or there were a time or two where she would come into my room and think my closet was the bathroom. And that is like the most probably like, it's just scary. Yes. And my, my husband actually did that one time. Of course he did. And yeah. And it just, I don't know, but it's so deep. Like I just feel, I don't know. I look at this so differently now. I'm like so grateful for the person I chose. I don't know. But yeah, but back to my mom. 
but yes, so those are like the bigger thing because it's almost like I said, it almost seemed like it was a trance. Like it's just like it's the like you said, abandonment. Like she wasn't she wasn't there she mentally wasn't there. in those moments. A mental illness in her, right? A little bit of mental illness. I'm sure. Right? Like a little bit of mental illness. And we don't know really where that came from, but I think it became from was she abused ever? No. So she she was um Jesus, what was it? I think she, in eighth grade, she was raped. Okay. But other than that, like I said, but she was adopted. So it's just never, your parents didn't want you. Like, you know, like the first people that were supposed to love on you didn't. So. So yeah. when you read in Fertile about rape, what it does to the energy field, there's a whole chapter. It's chapter um, four. Jump ahead to that chapter on generational patterns. And I give it a good example of rape throughout the whole chapter or about sexual abuse. And yeah. so typically with sexual abuse, the water element out of control. So it's like lying um, a lot, like the water element, it's grief, it's lying. And it's a lot of drinking because you have to, it's a, typically it's a lot of drinking because then you are, you're numbing, you're watering down yourself. And then from yeah. that, no boundary. So read the chapter. I wish I even had it here to read to you. Yes. you know, go in, even if you haven't bought it yet, go into your phone on the, on the Kindle and read That's that. That's what I have. I have it on Kindle. Yeah. Read that chapter today and you'll understand okay. the emotions of your mother and why she acted that way. Um, and then as you, you know that it may take you 10 years to heal this and you may never heal it, but if you choose to work through on it, provide you and the, the information I'm giving you, then you will heal it faster. And when you see your mother as a, com- it, you know, it's healed. like for me, I now, I had a hard thing with my mother too. And now recently I finally knew I healed it because she spent two weeks with me and we had no fights. There was, mm. no with us, there was nothing. And I said, Oh my God, I did it. And she, and, and the thing is about it is she didn't have to do any work. It was I, all you. I had to heal it in fr- inside of me. And then from there, there's, and you know that the relationship is healed when you have love and peace around it. Yeah. And then when you're doing that kind of work, you're actually healing it for mother, the mother earth and for so many more people than you even realize because then somebody else. So now I've healed my mother wound. So now I can energetically, even on the, on the phone with you, and now with the people that are listening to this podcast, I can energetically provide that gift of this is possible. I yes. did. It. Can I show you how to do it? So if I conquer a demon and it's in my field, it's in my aura, or I've looked at my trauma, or I found a better relationship, or I've left a husband, or I've given birth this way, it's now in my field and it can provide a gift for you that will open up over time. So this what's happening between us right now isn't really about the words. It's about a trans energy of what's, what's possible for your consciousness to change, which is really cool because it opens up over time. And what I find with people who work with me is they say, Oh my God, the next three days were so different or um, the next three weeks opened up something completely new. And then I give you the tools like the meditations to do. So we'll keep looking at that because these kind of wounds they're so see notice how you tapped into the wound you you glazed over it with a couple of memories those memories are and you didn't even want to touch into them because they're so painful yeah it's so painful i mean like it's like we can say like oh mom just i mean and i used to do that too i'd be like oh it wasn't that bad you know my dad it wasn't that bad no it was crazy i lived in a complete nut house complete i lived in an in an i grew up in an insane asylum and a hundred percent but i now and so i felt crazy all the time and i kept creating chaos in the craziness because the only thing i knew was insanity and mm. so i kept attract and it wasn't even it was just like i would create something outside of myself to mentally create the insanity within me or attachment to insanity or the attachment to something to maintain that normalcy, which I grew up with. And, and you do it too. It's all in your mind. So in order for us to get this baby down consciously, 
we have to tap into that wound and it's going to hurt so hard <laughs> that you're going to be mad at me. Because it's, it's like I'm touching into something that you've never touched into before. And then that's your ignorance. Mm-hmm. So, for us to, so there's this beautiful quote. There's a book, Mary Magdalene's in her Bible. She, I read some quote, some woman put down, there's these seven parts. You know, that there's that movie gluttony. Um, the guy It's a scary movie, but it talks about like ignorance and gluttony and attachment, or even the Buddhist stuff of all the things we have to go through to fully awaken. And throughout my life, I've been lucky enough and felt the pain enough to go through these different aspects of my consciousness and ignorance is the way that we pretend it didn't happen. Right. We pretend, and it takes my breath away even thinking about it. It's just like the whole world is walking around pretending that these did not occur. And this pattern isn't within us and that nothing really exists. And that's ignorance. And it's like, it's, and it can happen in many forms. It could be like ignoring that your husband's cheating on you. It could be ignoring that your husband's an alcoholic, which so many women do. And they're like, I'm going to live my life and pretend that this is not <laughs> happening. And he's not out all night long having an affair. It's like, no, that's painful. That's yeah. why your dad did that to you. So stopping of that and the awakening of humanity will come through each individual looking at that level of pain, which will begin to open up the heart chakra. So for you... I want you to go inside and close your eyes. And I want you to think, so in order to begin to heal the little girls, and I've talked about this many times, you have to have a safe house for them. So, and, and you'll begin to heal at different ages. And in the first session, we can't even tap into the level of pain because it'll be too much. But we now know it exists and we now know it's there and we now know it's going to be recreated with the partner until we get it out, right? And we now know that that's creating more density in you that needs to be released in order to attract a higher vibrational soul. So you need, where would the little girl feel safe? Like if we could create a, a house for your little girl, where would she feel safe? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Who's taking care of her? Who is she with? What kind of food does she have? Does she have toys? Um, and how old is she for the first little girl we need to rescue? Um, you saying eight? I have no idea if it was eight. But no, I didn't actually. Read, I didn't read that, but I just heard it. I don't okay, know. it's around there somewhere, though. I'm okay. sure. Um, but I would say, well, I'm with my father. He's he's who who raised us really like he was in the house and yeah, it was, so it was a whole lot of love from him. It's just mama. Um, so yes, that would be raised by my dad. It would be a lot of windows. Should I say like what the house looks like? You got to tell me exactly what the house looks like. Okay. So yeah, so it can be a small house, like a, like a tree house almost is what is in my head. Um, there's a lot of windows. I like natural light. And like I said, and my father is who would, would, who was taking care of her or me. So you I missed some of that. So repeat that again. So you're in a tree house with a lot of natural light and your father's yeah. there and he makes you feel safe. Is there anybody else there like friends and you have toys and you have all your food, you have all your basic needs, like mystical motherhood says, right? Yes. Okay, so I want you to keep going to this place because we're going to use it over and over again. Like over the next 10 years, this is your safe house. And and so uh, when we go through trauma and even in other lifetimes, parts of our souls are are lost. And so we're like not a whole person. Mm. Real shaman work is when I go back and I work with people. So this isn't like... A, a healing or a shamanistic thing, but I can go back into your timelines and we can gather parts of yourself that rescue you, the little girls. So all these traumatic memories, you left parts of your soul sometimes in the chaos, in the things. And so you, t- in order almost to come back and let's say, I'll heal you soon. Let me leave you here so I can find you. And then I'll have to yeah. heal. And that's cool. Cause it's just consciousness. And, and none of yeah. this. Well, anyway, it's all a hologram. 
So you kind of have to look at it as what now I can look at it and kind of laugh, even though it's painful, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I know I'm not, I know I'm not from here and I know that this is all like not real, but I also know I have to play it like a computer game. Yes. And so yes. when you start to look at it kind of like that, you're like, okay, he's just becoming. So when you start to get triggered by your husband, which he may even start to trigger you more now because you're starting to tap into it. And so you're not going to go into he's doing it. You're going to go directly to where's my little girl need healing. Mm. And then you tap into the memory of why, like when he walked into that room at night you're, and created that bathroom in your room, it was your mother, the nightmare of your mother walking into reality. Isn't it just amazing? That is. And he so can't bad. help it. It's not his fault. He can't help it because the trauma still lives in you. Mm-hmm. So he, he doesn't even know why he's doing it. But he has to help you heal it because that's your karmic contract. Okay. And so when he, and, that, and this will, you're going to start to see way more patterns. This is just one you're conscious of right now. And as ignorance lifts within you and of the people that are listening to this podcast, the ignorance will then lift up other layers of the feeling that needs to happen for you to create a soul that's more powerful than the last generation. Mm. Because everyone who works with me or anybody who reads my material, they're the women that are like on the front line. There's going to be way more as my, as my career goes on. The women that are just like, Cause it's not really, I don't look at motherhood as like this Instagram. I'm not even good at Instagram. Like this Instagram experience of like, this is what motherhood looks like. No, no, this is what motherhood looks like. <laughs> this is the real motherhood. All those women on Instagram have got to hide their breasts and, and not traumatize their children by putting them naked on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I mean, those children are going to hate them later and could become psycho killers because their body was shown on Instagram naked. I'm not going to get into it. But want to create a person who feels vulnerable and like everyone's looking at them with their butt is put your child naked on Instagram. Another story. But (laughs) it's a whole other thing. You want to create a a generation of psychopaths. Let's put our children naked when they're... Everybody on the gram. Show their body and get them angry. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so motherhood is Mm -hmm. about looking at your own bullshit so that you're not psycho like your mother. Right. And that's, that's conscious conception. It's a whole new outlook, right? You have a whole new yeah. look at what you're, what you're about to do. Yes. Whole so, new I, outlook. so I want, this is your homework. Okay. You're going to sit down with him over the next month and you're going to talk about, and especially on this trip, because, so you're about to go on a trip and of course you're going to be drinking. <laughs> and that was the first thing you said, right? That, so yep. everyone's listening. Um, Reason? Yes. Reason contacted me, found my work randomly, and is going to go on a trip and she, uh, with her husband because they're going on a baby moon before they have a baby. Yep. And she goes, well, well, we're going to be drinking, and I want to conceive after. Is this okay? It's not about the conceiving. It's about the drinking that you naturally brought up that I needed to work with you. Not even now I didn't. I can see the pattern. Putting it together. Yeah. yeah. So it's really not about you conceiving around the time of drinking. It's about healing the drinking of your mother. Right. It has nothing to do because, of course, you can drink some alcohol. and I mean, whatever. We all do whatever. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean. Read my book. Yeah, yeah. Don't conceive wasted and don't let him conceive wasted. Mm-mm, nope. But drinking before you're pregnant, we're all drinking. You don't have to. Okay. You're not a student, but then you do, people do, right? Yeah. But it, you brought that up because that's your original wound. <laughs> and that's what I'm, I'm coming to show you to uncover is for yeah. you to be a good mother, you have to tap into the pain of this. Okay. So the way to do that is infertile. I describe ways, I, mean, I describe meditations. Again, anyone who's listening, Fertile is my second book. It's available on Amazon. If you go to www.mysticalmotherhood.com, it's one of the most powerful books I probably think is on motherhood out there because it was channeled and it's from source for you guys to clear this crap. So you can, so in, in high alchemy, and it's not like shamanism and basically high alchemy, like ancient Egyptian alchemy, they use the elements. And so when, when they call when they say the alchemist or these different people, if they say the word alchemy, people don't really get what it means. Alchemy mm-hmm. is 
ancient transformation. It's the transformational properties that change consciousness. And it's done on the inside with the elements. And that's why it's important for pregnancy. But it's also done on the outside from God. So alchemy is an internal and external experience that connects you with the high above, like with the mm-hmm. six stages. So you become on the same frequency. You can use these elements to clear out your past. So in a meditative, in a meditation space, you can go into these memories at night. You can do it with a therapist. You could do it with me, however you need to do it. But you have to remember that they occurred. And you have to honor that they happened because if you don't, they'll just keep popping up with your husband. Yes. So then you can use the element of fire and begin to burn these memories out. And they're going to, for you, they live in your bottom three chakras. So all of our memories live within our bodies. And then you have to localize the memory, basically bring it out of your body, use the element of fire to burn it. And then if you go to my book in, or go to my book in, in Fertile, it'll tell you a meditation to clear it out. So you use, you burn the memory with fire, you can clear it out with water, allow wind to wipe the water out and then air you know it it's a process it's all infertile but getting to burn it and then putting the little girl into that safe house Mm -hmm. is the beginning of you seeing where all the patterns patterns in your life are coming from and this is a huge one for you to prepare for motherhood and that's why you brought up drinking in the text message okay reflect back to me what you're feeling are you in shock right now a little bit <laughs> because who told that to be and that was the one thing I just was going back and forth about is the drink but like I had a whole different idea why I was going back and forth about it it wasn't because it was my wound it was you know like so this is deep to know like yeah yeah I don't know what to say because exactly. you brought I mean and I didn't even think about it until just now I'm just yeah. for you I'm just <laughs> listening and I just start talking this is how, mm-hmm. and I make it practical, but, but you wanting to go on a trip and are kind of worried about the drinking is because you know that this isn't healed. Yes. And, and you're actually worried that he might come and get wasted on that trip and ruin that conscious conception moment. And that's the two of you. The real consciousness of that is not to go into the pattern and go get wasted because I'm, mean, it's fun. I definitely have been wasted with my husband so many times <laughs> right. grown in consciousness i don't want to do it as much anymore for sure i still drink wine but like yeah there's a pattern to that there's a pattern to like why are we having to go out and numb ourselves when mm. we're wanting to start a family and that's my biggest wound so why do i want to create my biggest wound with you because you know it. and even though you know it's wrong but we still rush into the fire to get burned yeah, we do. We rush into the fire to get burned. And then we collapse so many times of like, you are probably planning this trip. He's not. <laughs> and so like, you're like, well, why am I creating us to drink during our trip? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I feel funny about it, but I know it's kind of like, because your subconscious is used to alcohol. Right. And your childhood is used to alcohol. I hope you all enjoyed this amazing podcast with this guest who is vulnerable and open enough to share her story with us. So please reach out to me at mysticalmotherhood.com. You can email me at mysticalmotherhood at gmail.com. If you want to work with me privately or you want to be a guest on this podcast, I'm here for you. If you'd like to purchase one of my books, Mystical Motherhood and Fertile, both are available on Amazon. Fertile is written under the name Pritam Atma, and soon Mystical Motherhood will be, but it's available under Chelsea Wiley, and both are available on the Mystical Motherhood website. Please subscribe or leave a rating, share this work with your friends, and let's all work to change humanity together. Thank you.